Welcome to this video from Magnet Forensics covering Axiom Examine, Tags, Comments, Exports, and Portable Case. During this video, we'll discuss adding tags and comments to items in the Artifact Explorer as well as the File System Explorer. We'll also cover filtering on tags in the Artifact Explorer, which we've also seen in an earlier video. We'll walk through methods to export items from the Artifact Explorer how to export document metadata without the document files themselves, and we'll also take a look at exporting items from the file system. Finally, we'll introduce Portable Case, which can be used to collaborate on a case with other examiners and stakeholders. When you share a Portable Case with other stakeholders, they can explore the evidence and add their own comments, tags, and media categorizations. One of the nice things about Portable Case is that it is completely standalone and does not require that Axiom Examine be installed to utilize the portable case functionality. Well, let's switch back to our case in Axiom Examine. While we've already seen some of the tagging and comment functionality within Axiom Examine, we'll walk through a couple of exercises here in preparation for creating a portable case. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Explorer dropdown to switch to the Artifact Explorer view. And for this example, within Refined Results, I'll select Cloud Passwords and Tokens. Reviewing the items displayed in the evidence pane, I can see several entries where the password has been recovered for various online services. While we all know users like to reuse passwords, this information could be valuable for further investigation. I'll add these items to a tag by selecting the Tags, Comments, and Profiles pane, add new tag, and provide a name for this one. And we'll call it Recovered Passwords. Now that these items are added to my tag, I'm going to scroll to the right in the evidence pane to review the source for these artifacts. Notice that the password information for each of these platforms is recovered from the export.xml file included in the accounts information for their corresponding platform as part of the cloud evidence sources processed in this case. I may choose at this point to add a comment to these tagged items. In the lower portion of the tags, comments, and profiles pane, are links for add comment and manage tag. With these four items still selected in the evidence pane, I can click on add comment to provide any information I deem relevant to the investigation. When I finish typing my comment, selecting the OK button will add that comment and associate it with these four tagged items. Also notice in the tags, comments, and profiles pane, there's a date timestamp indicating when this comment was added. If I choose to remove this item from the tagged item, simply hovering over that brings the blue X icon into view, which can be selected to delete the comment. Next, we'll look at tagging items from the file system. This largely works the same as tagging items in the Artifact Explorer, and there may be times you locate items in your evidence source for which there are no specific artifacts shown in the Artifact Explorer view. So as an example, we'll use the Explorer dropdown We'll switch to file system and I'll expand the entry here for the SanDisk USB device. Let's just assume the two zip files listed here are of interest to the investigation. Maybe they contain contraband media items which we have located and tagged in the Artifact Explorer's media categories but as a point of reference we would also like to include tags for the zip archives that these items came from. I can select both of those, go over, expand the tag comments and profiles pane just as we would in the Artifact Explorer view and select the option to add a new tag. Just as we've seen with tagging items in the Artifact Explorer, we have a block of color indicating the tag has been applied and hovering over that will show the tag name. I can also add comments for these tagged items if I choose. Let's go back to the Artifact Explorer and we'll take a look again at a feature we've seen in an earlier video and that is filtering on tagged items. Using the Tags and Comments drop-down from the filters bar I could scroll down and pick any of the tagged items, including the one I just created from the file system view. Apply in that tag, updates the Artifact Explorer, and I can see a category listed in the navigation pane labeled Tagged from File System. This artifact category does not exist until items are tagged from the file system. We have an artifact listed of zip containing the two items that we just tagged in the file system view. Next, we'll take a look at some of our exporting options. First, we'll talk about exporting document metadata from the Artifact Explorer without the document files themselves. First, I'll clear my filters. I'll scroll down, expand the Documents category, 
and select the Excel Documents artifact. With that selected, I'll scroll to the right and locate the artifact fragment for recovery method. Here we'll find entries for both parsing and carving. In this example, I'm going to do a filter on column for recovery method of parsing. I now have 32 matching results in the Excel Documents category. At this point, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control plus the letter A to select all of those items, with the idea being I'm going to create an export of all of the data visible in the various columns of the evidence pane. So as we can see here, it will include things like the file name, the file system last access modified and created time, the file size, and if we scroll to the right, we'll also include things associated with document metadata. One of the easiest ways to do this is to right click anywhere in the evidence pane with these items selected and utilize that first option of Create Export Report. This will bring up the Report Creation menu in Axiom Examine. For this example, I'll select the option of CSV. There are other report formats available that you can see here, and we'll actually take a look at some of these later in this video and in an upcoming video. For this example, again, we'll select CSV. I'll choose Next. At this location, Items to Include, I need to go down and select the radio button here for selected items only because I only want to include these 32 parsed Excel documents. We'll select Next at the bottom of the window. We'll select Next. And at this location, I'm going to deselect the option to include source files in the attachment folder because again, we're only interested in the document metadata. If we'd like to include the Excel documents exported as attachments to the report, simply leaving this box checked will cause a subfolder to be created in our report location with those document files included. The lower section is labeled Configure Columns to Include. Our CSV file will include all of the columns available in the evidence pane. Notice there's a radio button for visible columns and column sorting from the current view. This can be useful if we've utilized the Show Hide Columns feature in the Evidence pane and performed specific sorting that helps to illustrate our findings. Finally, there's an option for Specific Columns Only. Selecting that radio button brings up the Manage Column Configurations link. Additional information about reporting templates and column configurations are included in a link in the video description. For this example, I'll go back and select all columns, which was the default. I'll choose Next at the bottom of the window, and we can then choose a location to save this file to. This file will be named export.csv, as can be seen here. At the lower right, I'll select the Export button to continue. In the status bar at the bottom of the Axiom Examine window, we can see the message Export to CSV Complete with a link for Open. Instead of opening the actual file, Axiom Examine will open the location where this item was saved to. I can double click to open this in Excel where we now have a row and column view containing all of the information from the evidence pane displayed in this CSV file. Let's return to our Axiom case, and we'll take a look at the next feature, which is exporting items from the Artifact Explorer. I'll go up to the Filters bar, use the Tags and Comments dropdown, and select the tag I've created for Email Attachments of Interest, and select OK. When doing that, I now see five items from the Email Attachments category that have been tagged. I can select all of these using Control A and then right click anywhere in the evidence pane on those highlighted items and select the second option, Save Artifact To. This will open a browser window where we can choose the location we would like to save the items to. In this case, I have a folder created named Export from Artifact Explorer that we'll use for this purpose. I choose Select Folder at the bottom and in the status bar at the bottom of Axiom Examine, I can see that the File Save dialog has completed and the open link is available. Selecting this, will open the saved location. Notice that Axiom Examine does not save the files directly to that location, rather creates a subfolder labeled Attachments with those items inside. This is a good opportunity to point out a use for exporting document metadata as we did earlier in this video. The act of exporting these items from the evidence containers to your local system will cause the file system on those disks to update timestamps with those files. In addition to exporting items from the Artifact Explorer view, you may also find times you'd like to do this from the File System Explorer. We'll use the Explorer dropdown, switch to File System, and we'll start out by just using the zip files we looked at earlier. Well, these are the same items we created the tags for. Let's also assume we'd like to export them from our evidence files. With both of the items selected in the Evidence pane, just as we did in the Artifact Explorer, I can right-click and choose the option to Save File Folder to. 
a browser window will open where we can designate the location that we'd like to save the files to. In this case, a folder named export from file system has been created. I'll choose select folder. And again, the status bar shows the files have been saved and the open link appears. One difference, when exporting items from the file system view, instead of going to an attachments folder, they're placed into a saved files folder. If we choose to save additional files to the same location, we'll see new subfolders created with a number appended to the end. As an example, I'll go back to Axiom Examine, and I'll select the three PowerPoint template files listed here. Again, choose the option to right-click, Save File or Folder 2, and we'll utilize the same Export from File System folder and the open link from the status bar so that we can now see Saved Files, which contains the two original zip files which were exported, as well as Save Files 2 containing those PowerPoint template files. One other option you may have noticed from the right-click context menu is the ability to save a file or folder to a zip. I'll go back to the File System Explorer view, select one of the original zip files, right-click, and then I'll utilize the Save File or Folder to Zip option. Again, we see a browser window, and the workflow is largely the same. However, we have to provide a file name for the export. Saving items from the file system to a zip can be particularly useful when working with evidence containing potentially malicious files. For this example, I'll provide a file name and click Save. As before, the status bar updates telling us the zip file was successfully created, and we could use the open link to navigate to that location. From here, the zip file created could be copied to another location or handed off for analysis with other tools. As already mentioned, when working with potentially malicious code, using the Save File folder to zip is a particularly useful option. Returning to the case dashboard in Axiom Examine, we'll walk through one of the reporting options available, which is Portable Case. Portable Case can be used to collaborate on a case with other examiners and stakeholders, and can be used by both technically trained users and non-technical reviewers. When you share a portable case with other stakeholders, they can explore the artifacts available, adding their own tags, comments, and media categorizations. Because Portable Case is designed as a standalone product, individuals working with a portable case do not need to have Axiom Examine installed or a license for Magnet Axiom or Axiom Cyber. Whenever a review of data contained in a portable case is complete, that portable case can be merged into the original case it was created from for further analysis or reporting. From anywhere within Axiom Examine, the Create Portable Case option is available from the File menu. Selecting that will open the Create Export Report window with the Portable Case option selected. Before going any further, let's close the Create Export Report window, return to the Case Dashboard, and talk about a scenario where we might use Portable Case. Now there are a variety of use cases for Portable Case, and it can fill a lot of different roles. But let's assume in this example, we're working as an examiner, we're in a busy lab, we have cases piled up, and a bit of a backlog. We have a new case that comes in, the investigator assigned to that case is looking for specific things related to email and chat messages and images and videos. So we're going to walk through creating a portable case containing those items and then take a look at the portable case and see what we can do with it. I'll go to the Artifact Explorer view. I'll clear this filter from an earlier video and sticking with our scenario, using the Artifacts dropdown from the Filters bar, I'm interested in email, chat, pictures, and videos. There's a Find box at the top that I could use to select the categories I'm interested in. Email and Calendar. Communication. Pictures. Potential Facebook pictures for this example. And finally, videos. We've now filtered our case to these items. To create a portable case, we can again choose the File menu, the Create Portable Case option. We'll walk through the process of creating the report. Because we use the Create Portable Case option from the File menu, that report format is already selected. Below, I'll select the Next button, and under Items to Include, I'll select the radio button for items in the current view to match my filter. We'll select Next, we'll again select Next, the checkbox here allows us to blur any media already categorized as illegal, which is included in the portable case. If we'd like to choose that option, enable the checkbox, and then choose Next. The final screen, labeled Preview and Save, allows us to choose a location where we're saving the portable case to. 
By default, this will go to our case folder. For this example, I'll select Browse, and I'll choose a folder I've already created labeled Portable Case. Down below, we can see a breakdown of the items included in the Portable Case. One thing you may find useful is a quick start guide in PDF format, which is distributed with the Portable Case. I'll select Export to begin creation of the Portable Case. When Axiom Examine has finished building the portable case, the status bar will update to reflect that Export to Portable Case is complete with an open link. Selecting that, our Portable Case Output folder will contain several items. The Case Files folder includes the case database and any tags, comments, media categorization, or other work done in Axiom Examine that are included in the portable case. The Dependencies folder includes items necessary for the portable case to run. The portable case quick start guide in PDF format is included, and to open the portable case, simply double click opencase.exe. Before I do that, I'm going to close the instance of Axiom Examine that I have running in the background. I'll then launch the portable case using opencase.exe. We're now looking at the case dashboard of the portable case, which looks very similar to the case dashboard in Axiom Examine. So sticking with our scenario, we're now the case investigator and we want to review the items in the portable case provided to us by the examiner. Any items that we locate of interest here can be tagged, we can make comments, we can create profiles, and we can conduct media categorization. Because we do not have the evidence files for this case, we are missing some of the explorers. We're limited to the case dashboard, artifact view, and timeline view. I'll use the Explorer dropdown and switch to the artifact view. And we can see our artifact categories in the navigation pane consist of communication and media categories, just like we selected in Axiom Examine before creating this portable case. So let's look at some of the things we can do in portable case. We'll start out by going to the pictures category, and then I'll change from column view to thumbnail view. Notice some of the thumbnail images already have the green outline indicating they have been categorized. As a reminder from the earlier video, the green box indicates these items have been classified as category zero to non-pertinent. Some of the functionality within Portable Case is just as we had in Axiom Examine. For instance, I could use the Sort By dropdown to sort the images shown based on their size. Media categorization can be conducted within the Portable Case. For example, if I wanted to add these images to the category zero, non-pertinent, I could select them and then press the zero on the keyboard. I could also scroll down in the tags and comments pane for the reminder that using the plus key will categorize all images in view that are not currently part of a media category as category zero, non-pertinent. If I find an image that I'd like to apply other categorization to, such as the four I've selected with the intent of adding them to category one, We'll then apply that media categorization and the blur effect. If I locate a thumbnail image that I'd like to review in greater detail, I can expand the details pane and the preview card to see the larger version of the image. I also have the ability to open that image in the picture preview window with additional functionality. Closing that, I'll return to the artifact explorer, switch from thumbnail view back to column view. Using the tags and comments dropdown on the filters bar, I'll scroll down and locate the tag for possible vehicles created using Magnet AI within Axiom Examine. I'll apply that filter, and using this first image as an example, I'll add a tag labeled Vehicle of Interest. Note, this item has already been tagged with the possible vehicles designation. We're adding a second tag to it within the portable case. I'll return to the filters bar, select the Clear Filters option, I'll go over to the navigation pane and expand the communication category, and we'll start out by looking at the Android call logs. Now, the idea here is we're going to just tag a few items so that we can import those back to our original case. I'll just select some random calls to use as the example. I'll select add new tag and apply that tag. I'll then select the Skype chat messages artifact from the navigation pane. Notice in the preview card of the details pane, I have the threaded chat preview. Additionally, I can switch from column view to conversation view, making it easier to review chat messages. For this example, I'll select the conversation between Isaiah Dashner and Monica Neff and add a new tag 
to include when I merge the portable case back into the parent case. Now at this point, let's assume we're done reviewing the data in the portable case and we'd like to merge this information and the new tags we've created and the media categorization that have been performed in the portable case back into the parent case. We can close the portable case using the X at the top right of the window or file and the exit option. I'll close the file explorer window and I'll relaunch Axiom Examine. Once back at the case dashboard in Axiom Examine, I'll go to the file menu and choose the option to merge portable case. The first window requires navigating to the location where the portable case is stored. We'll select browse. From the browser window, note that we're looking for the case.mfdb file. This is located in the case files subfolder. Opening that, I can select case.mfdb and then open. You may have noticed the check-in case compatibility status message, which appeared on the screen, which ensures the portable case we have selected was created from this parent case in Axiom Examine. We'll choose Next at the lower right. From this window, we'll choose the options we'd like to merge from the portable case into the original case. I didn't create any comments or profiles in the portable case, so I'll deselect both of those, then choose Next. The Merge Tags window determines how Axiom Examine treats conflicts with portable case tags meaning how to merge a portable case tag which has the same name as a tag in the parent case. You can either merge the tags or rename the portable case tag to keep them separated. By default, this window will only show conflicts, meaning tags with the same name from both the portable case and the parent case. If I deselect the Show Conflicts Only box, we'll be able to see a list of all of the tags that were created in both the original case and the portable case. I'll select Next. We're now at the Merge Media Categories window. This is useful when an item has been categorized in a portable case and assigned a different category from the original case. You can assign a tag to those merge conflict to allow further review in Axiom Examine. To help with this, we could add a user ID for the reviewer that was using the portable case. We'll select Next at the bottom right, and we see a summary before the merge operation begins. Once we're happy with the results here, we choose Merge, and in the status bar of Axiom Examine, we'll see case merging complete. At this point, I'm going to use the Explorer dropdown, switch to the artifact view. Using the tags and comments dropdown on the filters bar, I can see the tags that were created in the portable case, including the Android call log items of interest and chat conversation with Neff, as well as the tag created for vehicle of interest. This was just one example of using portable case, and there are countless others. Perhaps your case consists of several terabytes of data or millions of artifacts. You can use portable case to divide the workload between multiple examiners. In our example case, we've created a portable case, some tags were created in the portable case, and that's been merged back into the parent case. I could do additional work, tag additional items, and I could then create a new portable case of all of the tagged items and send that out for review again allowing another stakeholder in the investigation an opportunity to tag items, add comments, create profiles, and conduct media categorization. And again, merge that portable case back into the parent case when complete for further analysis or additional reporting. The volume of data in a typical case in modern investigations doesn't appear to be getting any smaller. The ability to collaborate on a case with other examiners and stakeholders using Portable Case in Axiom Examine makes it possible to share information with individuals who may have more expertise in a specific area or more knowledge about a specific aspect of the case. In our next video, we'll take a look at some of the other reporting options available in Axiom Examine.